नमस्कार हेलो एंड अ वेरी वॉम वेलकम टू सी आई टी एन सी आर टीज लाइफ फोन इन इंटरक्टिव प्रोग्राम माई नेम इस तानवी खुराना एंड इन दिस पर्टिकुलर प्रोग्राम ऑफ इंग्लिश ऑल द टेंथ क्लास चिल्ड्रन हु आर हियर विद अस दे कैन वॉच दिस प्रोग्राम एंड डिस्कस और अंडरस्टैंड दिस टेक्स्ट विद अस दिस इज कॉल्ड लेसन नंबर टू नेल्सन मंडेला अ लॉन्ग वॉक टू फ्रीडम I really hope that you're familiar with this uh, chapter and uh, you know who Nelson Mandela is. Well, let me tell you, he was the former president of South Africa and uh, there's a lot to learn from him. We have heard his speeches, his iconic speeches and uh, what exactly is long walk to freedom? What exactly wa- was freedom to him? Well, we are going to understand a lot about uh, this in this particular chapter and if you have any questions, any queries, reach out to us. Give us a call on our number which is 8800-440-559. If you want to email us, the email ID would be dth.class10 at the rate ciet.nic.in. At this moment, you are watching us on eVidya channel number 10. and uh, i have a guest with us in this studio let me please introduce to you my guest she is miss aarti kanungo mama very warm welcome to you good afternoon everyone good afternoon to you too ma'am she is from skv lakshmi nagar new delhi and uh, it's going to be a very interesting discussion but before we begin this discussion i have an announcement to make that is regarding india's g20 presidency we are extremely proud of the fact that india assumed g20 presidency and would convene the g20 leaders summit for the first time in the country this year that is 2023 a nation deeply committed to democracy and multilateralism India's G20 presidency would be a watershed moment in her history as it seeks to play an important role by finding global pragmatic solutions for the well-being of all and in doing so manifest its true spirit of Vasudeva Kutumbakam or should i say the world is one family with that let's begin this conversation and let's ask our expert ma'am would you like to um, to just give us a brief about what this chapter is all about and what are we going to understand this text about yeah sure so good afternoon my dear students so today uh, this chapter is about nelson mandela mm-hmm. and we all know he is the first black president of south africa so i think this is really important to discuss about south africa's president nelson mandela how he fought for the freedom of his men of his countrymen and this policy of racial discrimination that is really important so let us uh, throw some light on this chapter and we are going through it so uh, before you read i just want to tell you about this political system that separates the people according to their race this is apartheid we all know about this harsh in human system that talks about discrimination of blacks and whites the non whites are being discriminated against this is our racial discrimination apartheid and nelson mandela he fought for this and definitely he won and he had settled a system of democracy in south africa mandela he became south africa's first black president nelson mandela has become the president after 3 centuries like this democratic system was established after 3 centuries do you know that he had been in prison for 27 years yes and african national congress in this democratic system in this elections won 252 out of 400 seats it's a big wig win for a democratic country and then this the inauguration ceremony that took place in the union building of pretoria attended by distinguished personalities and guests from more than 140 countries around the world so do you know tanvi that this is really important that when we are talking about bringing the uh, bringing so many dignitaries in the world and talking about them showcasing that our country is moving forward we are looking for the new sunshine yes 
Ma'am, um, so the title says Nelson Mandela Long Walk to Freedom. Would you like to tell us the uh, little, little bit of history regarding uh, this title, Long Walk to Freedom? What does it signify? Yes, actually uh, this is an autobiography of Nelson Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom. And this is an extract, this lesson chapter is an extract from his autobiography. And the main point is this, that he has been through so many harsh uh, realities. He had witnessed so many harsh realities in his life. And then he got freedom, not only the freedom for himself, but for his countrymen, I would say. Absolutely. That was really important that he won the freedom for the whole nation, South Africa. That is iconic, I would say, that a person and all the South African patriots who fought for their freedom. Absolutely. So, sounds like he was a true patriot and a, a very close uh, to his country and to his countrymen. So, would you like to read uh, this extract to all our viewers? Yeah. So, uh, when he was sworn in as the South African president, then Mr. D. Clerk, he was the second deputy president. First, he was given the oath. Then Thabo Mbeki was given sworn in as the first deputy president. Nelson Mandela, as the president of South Africa, he pledged to devote himself to the well-being of the republic and its people. It was actually glory and hope to the newborn liberty. Nelson Mandela quotes, after an extraordinary human disaster must be born a society of which all humanity will be proud. And definitely, we all are proud of this human behavior, this human society, which treats everyone as equal. Gratitude towards all the distinguished international guests. It's a common victory for justice, for peace, for human dignity, I would say. Actually, we have achieved the political emancipation. Emancipation, it means freedom. Yes, to liberate all our people from the bondage of poverty, deprivation, suffering, gender and other discrimination. Nelson Mandela, he said, let freedom reign. God bless Africa. And after his speech, there was a spectacular array of South African jets, a display of pinpoint precision and military force. Impala jets left a smoke trail of black, red, green, blue and gold of new South African flag. And one thing which was really important and inspired everyone is that, at that day, playing of two national anthems was there. The vision of whites singing Nakosi Sikelel and blacks singing Diastem. This is really, really impressive and everyone was so much inspired and motivated. When we talk about this racial discrimination, actually, it is after this Anglo-Boer War. A few years after this Boer War, the white-skinned people of South Africa, they erected a system of racial domination against dark-skinned people. They created one of the most harshest, most inhumane societies in the world, as has ever seen. It is the courage, the wisdom and generosity of African patriots, I would say which requires such depths of oppression to create such heights of character. Actually, they were so much oppressed, exploited and discriminated that they actually wanted freedom, emancipation and want to be human, called human. They were treated as slaves, I would say. Nelson Mandela, he quotes, my country is rich in minerals and gems that lie beneath its soil. But I have always known that its greatest wealth is its people, finer and truer than the purest diamonds. He treated his people 
as gems and they are the true assets of any nation I would say. About courage, he says, if you are not afraid, that does not mean courage. Courage means you have to conquer your fear. The brave man is not he who does not feel afraid, but he who conquers that fear. We all know that love comes naturally. Actually, we are taught to hate others. We are taught to hate other people. But the natural feeling is of love. No one is born hating another person. They can, if they can be learned to hate, they can be taught to love. For love comes naturally to human heart. And very important thing which Nelson Mandela said, that while he was in prison, there were moments when the guards, he could see that glimmer of hope, that humanity, that generosity in the guards also. That gave him the hope. So that glimmer of humanity in one of the guards, perhaps just for a moment, it was enough to reassure him and to keep him going. Nelson Mandela said, every human being, he or she has twin obligations. Twin obligations, obligation to his family, to his children, to his spouse, wife and children, everyone. And another one, obligation to his nation, to his men, to his countrymen. A man of color, actually in South Africa, is not allowed to fulfill his twin obligation. In South Africa, a man who tried to fulfill his duty to his people was given an exile. He has to live apart from his family. He becomes a rebel in a twilight existence of secrecy and rebellion, I would say. And then the oppressor must be liberated just as the oppressed. When we talk, the person who is being oppressed, he is exploited. Then we also know the person who is the oppressor, he is also behind the bars of that hatred. He also wants to be free, free from this hatred. So, it's really important both the oppressor and the oppressed should be freed. That can only be possible if we love humanity. The oppressed and the oppressor alike are robbed of their humanity. So in this way, we can say that actually Nelson Mandela fought not for himself, but for his country, for his countrymen to liberate everyone from this inhumane system of racial discrimination. Absolutely. And uh, when we say that love is a very strong emotion, I think that uh, by his speech, we can understand that he felt it and uh, he understood it way yeah. better than others. And uh, now when we say that the oppressor must be as liberated as the oppressed, would you like to um, no, explain this phrase a little more? Yeah, I would love to. Hmm. Actually, we think that the one who is being exploited, hmm. he is only suffering. But let me tell you, the person who is exploiting the other one, he is also having those harsh emotions inside his heart, filled with hatred. He also wants to be loved. He also wants to leave those shackles, break those shackles of inhumanity. Everyone wants to be loved. That is why I am saying the oppressor who is exploiting the other person, he wants love. That So he wants that everyone should be equal. It is only that he is being forced to do the exploitation, he is being forced to do the oppression. But it is really important when he is given love, he also wants to be loved. That is oppressor and oppressed. Both wants love, which comes naturally. Yeah. 
that is really important we all teach don't do this don't talk to that person that is hatred but if we have such a beautiful atmosphere or ambience and environment where everyone is loved everyone is treated equally then there is no oppressor then there is no one of being oppressed absolutely i think um, our students are going to definitely agree with each and every word you just said so uh, ma'am when we talk about uh, nelson mandela's speech um, it is iconic for sure yeah. but there are other political uh, you know personalities speeches who hold which holds as much importance as the others yeah. uh, let me just name a few be it uh, king martin luther or uh, john f kennedy or abraham lincoln or even barack obama so and nehru pandit and, nehru yes and pandit nehru of course and um, if we talk about uh, his speech nelson mandela speech what was so special about his speech that you know made him um, you know better than others uh definitely uh, it's not about being better but i would say all the speeches are really important hmm. but nelson mandela he is the one who talked about the freedom from this racial discrimination he talked about equality he talked about emancipation i would say and he talked about his men as diamonds as gems he told everyone everyone around the globe that we are ready as a democratic country we are fighting for it and now we are standing in the world before everyone to give a human a just an equal society to everyone and also he talked about that whatever has been done whatever damage has been done the wounds will be there they are there but we have to uh, we have to uh, up, move above from that we have to heal our wounds that is the thing that can only be done through love and nelson mandela is a personality i would say that he talks about non violence he won the freedom from racism just because of non violence that is really important when we talk about fighting from other person and fighting that to non violent means that is really important so his speech holds so much importance today that we all should be motivated to listen to that and in that way we will understand all the flaws of the society of the political system and then we have to remove those flaws we have to move above them to create a just and equal society okay mam we uh, can see on this slide that it's mentioned freedom day and uh, it's 27th of april if i am not wrong and uh, uh, because most of the nations were under the british rule so uh, south africa was the last one to get the freedom and uh, nelson mandela was the hero of the struggle right and uh, there are so many heroes i'm sure that uh, apart from nelson mandela there must have been other heroes mm -hmm. as well just like indian um, freedom struggle so if we talk about uh, the similarities or differences between these two struggles uh, would you like to pinpoint anything yes like uh, in india also like we were under british rule we were being dominated by britishers for so many years in the same way the south africa that was under the domination of whites this similarity that has made that has created characters such characters such huge personalities i would say patriots like in india we have mahatma gandhi ji subhash chandra bose jawaharlal nehru lal bahadur shastri tilak and so many leaders are there but there are many whom we don't know they are unsung heroes of our freedom struggle in the same way in south africa also we have so many leaders we know about and there are many unsung heroes also apart from the similarity one thing which is common to it is non violence like in india we adopted 
non-violent methods for democracy, for freedom struggle. In the same way, in South Africa also, non-violence was used for getting freedom from this apartheid system, from this racial system. And this is really important because when we, uh, an eye for an eye is not a solution, definitely. So it is all with love, with care and with non-violent methods we can achieve freedom in true sense. Absolutely. Ma'am, it's been so long since uh, South Africa got its freedom, since India got its freedom. This is the 75th year we are living in. Do you think things have changed in today's time? Uh, should we use the same non-violent method or uh, uh, people need to use an eye for an eye method? Uh, an eye for an eye is definitely not a solution okay. to any problem that will make the whole world blind, I would say. The only solution is love and non-violence. We all need to be peaceful. We all need to respect each other. Mm -hmm. The culture, the traditions, the race, the religion, I would say, of everyone should be respected and given due equal respect and importance. That is the only thing. If it's done properly, if we are giving equal justice, we talk about equality, then only we'll have a kind, a beautiful and a loving world, I would say. We are not talking about just a nation, we are talking about world, we are talking about global world. When you talk about globe, our world, Vasudhaif Kutumbukam, we talk about this, you just yes. talked about it, G20, yes. Vasudhaif Kutumbukam. So the whole world is a family and in a family, we love share and care indeed we love share and care and the entire world is a family thank you thank you so much ma'am with such My beautiful pleasure. message with such beautiful words and the way you explained uh, this entire extract was amazing so i thank think so we much. have learned a lot thank you thank you, thank you so thank much you. for being with us today namaskar Thank you to all the children for being with us today. It was a wonderful uh, conversation and uh, please, if you have not read it already, read it on your own. This is a part of your textbook and uh, go through it. And if there are any questions, we are here for your queries. So the, uh, today we discussed Nelson Mandela, Long Walk to Freedom, Understanding the Text. And uh, now we're wrapping up this particular program, but you have a lot to look forward to. Upcoming next program is a maths program for all the ninth class children. And the topic of discussion would be chapter number one, number system, part three. Stay here and keep your questions ready. Before we leave, I have an announcement to make that is regarding the NCRT textbooks only. If you have not bought it yet, please buy it from the NCRT sales counters. Um, they are located at certain locations. That's New Delhi, Kolkata, Guwahati, Ahmedabad and Bangalore. From 9.30 a.m. to 6 p.m. That These are the timings of the sales counter. Please purchase it from them directly and uh, be it a Saturday or a Sunday or a gazetted holiday, you can still buy them. Their sales counters will be open throughout all days. And if you want to Place an order online then ncrtbooks.ncrt.gov.in that is the website you can place an order of the textbooks that you need that you require and they will reach your home in no time and you don't have to pay anything for the delivery as well. If you want to just download the soft copies of the textbooks, you can even do that through NCRT, Diksha, Ipat Shala websites or their mobile applications. Just download the soft copies with the watermarks and you can use them, read them whenever you want. If you want to know more about our authorized vendors, then ncrt.nic.in is our website. Please go there and uh, just have a look at the list. Thank you so much for being with us today. And this was everything about uh, our chapter, our, this entire session. Thank you once again. Take care and uh, stay with us. Don't go anywhere. Take care. Namaskar.